How you guys doing? Um, appreciate you guys uh, coming in. Um, I am, if you guys don't know me, uh, I took over for Justin a few months back. Uh, I went to school here from 07 to 11. Um, joined the staff right after that. Um, we won three Big Ten titles when I was on the team and uh, won the national title my first year coaching. Um, and honestly, this class uh, that we brought in this year is probably the best since that 2012 class. Um, so we're very, very excited about it. It was a lot of hard work. Um, had to bring in a new staff. Team has been fully bought in. We have incredible culture right now. Um, and they all did a great job to bring in these, these four um, guys. So the way, the way it works with men's gymnastics is pretty much have two categories. You have your, your all-around gymnasts um, who train all the events, all six events. Um, and they usually are able to fill three to four spots, three to four of those events at least. Um, if they do that, then you've got a pretty solid um, all-arounder. And then there are specialists. Those guys usually only do one or two events, um, but they can excel a little bit more on those uh, individual events. So we brought in uh, Vahe Petrosian. He is arguably, he's the consensus, probably number two overall in the nation, um, arguably biased, I think he's number one. Um, we got two other top 10 all-arounders, so three total top 10 all-arounders, which is amazing. Um, the second is Preston Nye. He is the younger brother of Brandon Nye, who uh, was on the team here. He was the youngest athlete ever to win an NCAA title in any sport ever. Um, he was a specialist, Brandon was. Um, Preston is an all-arounder. So Preston has the same strengths of pommel horse that Brandon did. Brandon won a, a national title on pommel horse. Um, but Preston has it everywhere. He has no weaknesses on anything. Um, so he, he is going to bring a ton, a ton of help um, across the board. And then we got Alex Tapanez, <clears throat> and he's from Florida. Um, he had a pretty tough injury a couple years back. Uh, but when you look at him as an athlete, um, he could arguably be the best in the class himself. So he hasn't been able to, to you know, produce the results because he had to recover from um, two serious leg injuries at the same time, which uh, left him. He had, pretty much had to learn to walk again. But when you look at his gymnastics, you look at his training, uh, he, has, he has the talent to be just as good as some of those top guys in the top five. Uh, and then the, the last and the four, we have Brandon Dang, who is the number one specialist in the nation. Unbelievable. This kid is uh, also a pommel horse worker. Um, he could follow in Brandon Nye's footsteps like I was talking about before. He's going to have the opportunity to fight for world and Olympic medals uh, individually on, that, on his one event. Um, and so when you look at gymnastics, it's pretty simple. When, it, when you really break it down, it's uh, 30 scores. 30 guys compete who puts up the, the highest combined score. So when building the team, um, while Pommel Horse is kind of our competitive advantage, what we're good at, um, we were looking for you know, some other events, but when you have the opportunity to recruit a guy that could possibly be your highest score of the 30 across the board, you know, meet in, meet out, um, that was a tremendous piece to be able to get a guy that could potentially score 15, uh, which you're not going to find at all. If you, if you look at results, it's, that's a really, really difficult mark to achieve. Um, Ian Skirky, who's on our team now, has done it a couple times, but it's, it's really tough. So getting a guy that could potentially put, produce the highest score on any event on any team in the country is obviously a, a, a huge benefit to have. Um, and I guess just a little more about Vahe, the, the consensus, too, that we got. This kid is unbelievable. Um, he's pretty quiet as far as he's not... Uh, you know, on social media, he's not all out there trying to be this big hot shot. He's quiet, has his head down, works his tail off. Um, it fits the culture perfectly. I think he's, uh, th that's the kind of the team that we're trying to build here. Um, guys that are just ready to do the dirty work to, to get the job done. Um, he has aspirations to make the Olympics, um, and we're going to be fighting to do that with him. So.
What's recruiting like when there's only a dozen D1 programs out there, maybe all vying for likely the same gymnasts? Yeah, so it's in a lot of ways um, it's easier, and in a lot of ways it's it's harder because um, basically how we do it, uh, we we don't we were recruiting 23. We were, I, I have not even begun recruiting 24s, and I don't have to because there's only you know a certain number of programs. Um, there's really no need to to jump the gun and and pull ahead. So, but you got 15 programs intensely recruiting the top, you know, 50 guys in the country. So uh, the difficulty there is that you're competing. You're, the good thing is you're in the mix at all times. You're in the mix with Stanford. You're in the mix with Oklahoma. Um, you're in the mix with Michigan and, and Ohio State and all those teams. Um, for us, what it comes down to is the recruiting trip. Uh, that It's very rare that I have an athlete that has Illinois as their number one coming in. And so it all comes down to what we have and what we can show them on the recruiting trip. And most of the time, it's on that recruiting trip that has them bump up, you know, from us being their number three or number four to us being the number one. Um, so it's it's like I said, I think the the good thing is that we don't have to. Um, you're not going to fall out completely because as long as you you've earned yourself into that top half, into that top eight, top seven spot. Um, like I said, you're, you're you're already in the mix with those guys, and so you can really fully commit. Um, I'm sure with the other sports, it might be a little difficult to fully commit, to fully go after that top guy. Because if you lose him, what are you going to be left with? Um, at that point, you, can, you might fall out of the top 100, which could be really difficult. Um, we went all in. We went all in this year, even though um, you know I got the interim tag and I'm, I'm new. We got a passionate, hungry staff passionate hungry team our strategy was to go all in go for those top guys and it worked out for us this year and this is going to set us up for years to come what it what is the ratio of uh, full scholarship athletic scholarship to partial or or walk-on status for, for your team um so so yeah we have 6.3 total scholarships we have a 20-man roster um I do need to offer out. I, I do. I do think that I have a higher average of full ride, full ride offers out. Uh, typically, um, sometimes you have to kind of go all in to get some of those top guys. So for us, we do probably have about five guys that'll be close to around full ride, um, and then we'll have, I'd say about probably seven or eight other guys that are on partial scholarships, and then we have. We have all Americans that are walk-ons. Um, a huge, huge piece of recruiting is walk-ons. Um, I've had national champions, Brandon and I, youngest national champion in history, was a walk-on. You know, was able to give him some money afterwards. But uh, for gymnastics, because of the allotment that we have, it's you need to win everywhere. You got to win in the full rides. You get your full ride guys got to produce better than full rides. Your partial, partial guys got to outproduce that, and your walk-on guys need to outproduce that. So probably on average it's a third, a third, a third. Third full ride, a third partial, a third walk-ons um, tends to be the ratio. I guess what have the last few months been like for you to assemble a staff, build a recruiting class, and do so with the interim tag that you mentioned? Yeah, so that first month uh, in July was was tough for sure. We had, you know, J Justin was a very big presence. Um, he was also big in recruiting. Um, Justin and I both kind of tackled recruiting together, which was a big advantage in recruiting in general. Um, being that uh, he left kind of in the middle of the process was really difficult because the, you know, for next year, the recruits are going to know me as the head coach. Well, they had developed a relationship with Justin already. So I had to do a lot of, uh, you know, talking kids, you know, off, off, the, uh, off the wall because it, it was difficult. The way they were looking at it was, um, you know, like I told you, Illinois is usually not the number one, so we we're kind of teetering on that five spot. Um, it, it came down to the relationships. I think that um, we built, my staff built, that I built with with these guys. Um, it wasn't easy. There were a few top guys that were planning to back out. I was able to convince them to at least wait until they saw the, the staff that I hired while that was happening. 
I was constantly communicating, constantly able to, to build that relationship. And then when I hired the staff, um, you know, arguably the best staff in the country, that really helped keep them in. And then once they came on the recruiting trip, that kind of sealed the deal. So yeah, that, that, that was, from a recruiting standpoint, that was really difficult. Um, I also was in Israel for almost three weeks coaching for the Team USA um, at the Maccabi Games the day after I found out Justin was leaving. So the team was left without both of us for that month. So that, that wasn't easy. That was, that was really, really tough. Um, but everybody just worked their tail off. You know, as soon as I hired staff, Don was a rock star. He's, he's been with us for the last uh, six years. He took care of the team while I was gone. Um, Wes, my volunteer coach, uh, now he's my volunteer coach. He stepped in, was able to um, help out, and the team absolutely loved him. He was a huge integral piece during the summer. Um, and we were able to sign him as a you know, volunteer coach now, and then once Tim joined, he was a huge help. So um, couldn't have done it without the staff. But yeah, it's, it's flown by. It's also felt like about a decade. I'm starting to gray over here on the right, first time ever. So um, yeah. Any more questions? All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.